بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم so i'm happy to welcome all of you to day two of our liver and pancreato biliary malignancies master class um, we will start our uh, second day today uh, and the uh, talks are going to range between pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors gallbladder and cholangiocarcinoma and we'll end uh, this day by presenting some challenging cases and getting everyone's input into those so for our first session of today we're going to present some pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor updates and i'd like to uh, welcome dr abdurrahim shengiti who is a consultant medical oncologist and works at king fahad uh, 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 medical or King Fahad Hospital in Dammam. He has an interest in uh, GI oncology and GU oncology. I also would like to welcome Dr. Imad uh, Tashkendi, who is joining us virtually. Uh, he uh, does work also as a consultant medical uh, oncologist uh, uh, in Mecca. His interests are in uh, GU uh, oncology. Uh, Dr. Shengiti, Dr. Imad. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa Thank you for the invitation. I want to thank Dr. Karan and Dr. Ashwaq for the kind invitation. I'm glad to be here at Riyadh with our friend from National Guard and the rest of the group. Uh, we had a great first day focusing on hepatocellular carcinoma from basic to advanced, and today we'll switch gear to uh, pancreatic biliary and difficult cases. I will moderate the session. I'm Abdurrahim Shankriti. Uh, Dr. Imad uh, Tashkandi will moderate the session with me as well as introduced by Dr. Kanaan. He's assistant professor at Umm al Qura University and previous director at uh, King Abdullah Medical City. Uh, today, uh, our session, the first session, will be about the pancreatic cancer and uh, NET. Uh, the first lecture. lecture will be uh, by Dr. Mohamed al uh, in uh, latest advance in pancreatic adenocarcinoma systemic therapy. Mohamed al is a dear friend of mine. He's a, a head section of oncology and outreach program at the National Guard King Abdul Aziz City and uh, he will uh, take us in a journey for the next 20 minutes in the latest advanced. Uh, without further ado, I want to welcome Dr. Mohamed al -Gherni. Start. <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdurrahim and Dr. Uh, Imad for the introduction. And thank you, Kanaan and Ashwag, for the kind invitation to talk about the latest advances in the management of metastatic pancreatic cancer. So uh, I am the first one to speak in the morning. So uh, I just uh, thought to add a case, study case, uh, along the talk so it can uh, make the, the talk more um, interactive. So this is a 66-year-old male patient, known case of diabetes, an oral hypoglycemic agent. He presented in March 2020 with abdominal pain, loss of appetite, and an intentional weight loss. He had a CT scan of the abdomen that showed uh, pancreatic mass and a peritoneal disease. CT scan showed um, uh, right lower low pulmonary nodule. So uh, the biopsy was requested, but the interventional radiologist was able to do only CT-guided uh, fine needle aspiration that confirmed presence of malignant cell consistent with adenocarcinoma. His baseline CE199 was 652. So this is a typical presentation of patient with uh, pancreatic cancer. As you know, most of um, uh, pancreatic cancer patients unfortunately present with a locally advanced a resectable or metastatic uh, disease. And the five-year survival uh, of patients with pancreatic cancer is really not the best, especially for the patient with uh, distant or uh, locally advanced a resectable uh, disease. So it's still a very aggressive disease with, with uh, late presentation for most of the patient. Unfortunately, most of the patient who had a curative intent treatment, including whipple surgery and adjuvant therapy, 
70% of them eventually will develop metastatic disease. So basically we're talking about almost 95% of patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, they will have a metastatic disease at certain point. So if we look to the improvement over uh, the, the last 20 years uh, in the overall survival, there is improvement in overall survival, but still remain uh, poor, poor prognosis. Uh, since the 1997, where the supportive care was the only uh, treatment for the patient, the survival was three to four months. This improved to five to six months with gemcitabine. Then gemcitabine doubled with kepcitabine. It, uh, also uh, was considered in the 2005 and 2010 we have more aggressive regimen combination for pheronox that improved the survival up to one year and uh, lastly we had the gemcitabine and the bruxine that also uh, improved the survival to nine to uh, ten months so still the um, the the uh, a lot of work has to be done but this is what we have achieved over the last uh, 20 years uh, one uh, message here is Still, uh, we are focusing on treatment, however, simple interventions like referring the patient to palliative care at the time of diagnosis also improve the quality of life and the survival for patients with pancreatic cancer. So what are the factors that we take into account when we decide about the first line therapy? Uh, performance, status, and age is the most important factors that we take into account. Pre-existing medical condition uh, also will affect our choice of therapy presence of uh, endobiliary stent also, and the risk of infection also something we take into account, convenience and the patient uh, preference. And for small percentage of patient also, there is a predictive biomarker which we are going to talk about. So if we look to the uh, standard of care phase three studies that was uh, done in the metastatic setting, we have the Prodige 4, uh, that looked to the fulfirinox versus gemcitabine, which is considered the standard of care before uh, this study. And in this study, they included patients less than 76 years of old, and all of them, they have echo performance of one to two, sorry, zero to one. And this study did show improvement in the progression free survival and overall uh, survival. And this is, was the basis for uh, approval of the fulfirinox as a standard of care for fit patient less than 75 years of, uh, of, of age with excellent performance status to receive the fulpirinox. As you would expect with the combination uh, chemotherapy, the risk of uh, side effect is more with the combination uh, treatment. We are talking about uh, mainly the risk of neutropenia. The febrile neutropenia was 5.4 compared to 1% in patient with uh, gemcitabine. Another landmark study that uh, uh, form the pace of the, uh, the the standard of care of treatment for patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer is the IMPACT study. In this study, they uh, uh, looked for the gemcitabine in addition to na uh, NAB baclitaxel versus gemcitabine as a monotherapy. And in this study, they uh, included more than 800 uh, patients and they included patients with um, uh, ECO performance status of two. So this is one of the difference between the IMPACT and the PRODIGE study. Again, in this study, the study with its prior many endpoint, which is the improvement of overall survival and the progression uh, free survival. And again, as you would expect with the combination, the toxicity uh, is more common with the uh, combination R. Now, this is a cross comparison between the two studies. Uh, it, it, it's, it's never compared head to head. However, we can just have a cross between the study. The main difference is the population included in the study. So for patients with fulfirinox, they are really fit patient. More than 90% of the patient, they have ECOG zero to one. While in the patient with, on, on the impact study, they have more patient, they have more patient with ECOG two. The tumor burden was more impatient with NAB baclitaxel and gemcitabine. This is might explain to some extent the reason for better outcome with patient with fulfirinox compared to the impact study. Another uh, regimen that uh, was uh, studied in patient with metastatic, uh, sorry, that was uh, studied with the patient with um, uh, metastatic pancreatic cancer is the uh, use of nine liposomal ironutican in addition to oxaliplatin and five uh, few in the first line setting. This was a phase 1B2 study, and uh, the, the, uh, the overall response rate was 34%, and the median for all was 1. However, this is uh, still early phase study, 
and there was significant uh, grade three or higher toxicity, mainly the uh, hematological toxicity about 68% and 12% of patients developed febrile neutropenia. However, this is also was taken to a phase three study, the Napoli three trial uh, to address the, the role of this combination in comparison to the uh, impact protocol uh, in the first line setting. Another uh, combination that uh, showed impressive um, uh, response rates in the first line setting is combining gemcitabine and baclitaxel with cisplatin. In this study, the primary endpoint is to have 25% of the patient to achieve CR, which was really uh, very, uh, you know, the expectation was very high in, in this combination. And I think it did well uh, despite they are requesting 25% well, um, of patients to have CR, 8% of the patient develop complete response, and the overall response rate was uh, 71%, and the disease control rate was 88%. So this is really a good result. However, it's again, it's a significant toxicity, mainly hematological toxicity. So if we look to the first line, our choice for first line therapy, it's depend mainly on the agent performance status. If you have a fit patient who is less than 75 years of, of age, your, your option will be Fulferinox versus Gem and Nabaclitaxel. If you have patients with ECOG performance too, you will consider Gem uh, Aproxane or Gemcitabine as a single agent. Patient with poor performance status is uh, all the time with option. For patient who is older than 75, uh, they, with uh, ECOG 0 to 2, Gem Aproxane or Gemcitabine as a monotherapy, is preferred. However, still, if you have really a very good fit patient in this age with no comorbidities, you might consider Fulfinox and palliative care, as I mentioned, for patients with poor performance status. So back to our patient. He was seen first in May 2020. His equal performance status was one. He was started on Fulfinox and a comprehensive germline panel uh, was requested for him. The patient had good tolerance to treatment and with improvement in his um, symptoms. And his CA199, however, it's increased to 927 after three cycles of chemo. So one of the things that has been reported in patients with pancreatic cancer is the early transient increase in surge in the CA199 uh, level. This paper was published uh, this year and looked to the patient treated in the first line setting with either Fulfirinox or NAP, uh, Baclitaxel with gemcitabine. And they found in this study some of the patients who show response to therapy, they have initial surge and rise in their level of CE99. And usually this happen usually four to eight weeks after starting the the chemotherapy and usually it lasts 12 to 16 weeks before you start to see drop in the CE99. If the patient is clinically responding, the symptoms is better. However, there is a rise in CE99. Instead of having uh, the thought of progression, this might be an early sign of response to those patients. This also has been seen for cancer. One of my patients who uh, had the CE, CEA level increase to more than 15,000 before the patient start to show uh, uh, some uh, decline in the level of the CEA. So uh, I continued his treatment for two more cycles and the CT repeated and showed stable metastatic advanced pancreatic cancer and the CA99 now dropped to 713. His chemotherapy was continued until September 2020. It showed interval decrease in the size, the CT scan at that time and the pancreatic mass and the peritoneal metastasis in keeping with partial uh, response to treatment and the stable micronodules bilaterally that thought to be uh, benign in nature. The CE199 now dropped to 440, and the patient now has grade three uh, neuropathy. So one of the questions uh, that always raised in the patient receive Fulfirinox for the duration from three to six months is whether you can put the patient on maintenance therapy or you should continue the Fulfirinox uh, as the whole uh, regimen. However, in this patient, I was forced to stop his uh, oxaliplatin due to the neuropathy. So is maintenance possible with Fulfirinox? This was a study in the Prodige 35 study. It was presented only as abstract in 2018. We don't have the final result, but it did show that patient treated with Fulfirinox and they were kept on maintenance with five few licovorin. Uh, they still do uh, good as if you continue the Fulfirinox. However, we don't have the final uh, 
uh, analysis or the final full publication of the uh, study. So he was maintained on Fulfiri and no more oxaliplatin was given. Repeated scan in December 2020 showed stable uh, pancreatic and omental disease and the CE99 uh, now is uh, 74. So uh, as planning for the second line uh, for his treatment, I was uh, planning to do the molecular profiling. And I, after discussion with the interventional radiologist to get an omental biopsy, he did an ultrasound that did not show any visible peritoneal masses to biopsy. So we plan to continue his chemotherapy and to order PET scan as a follow-up. So his PET scan show mild activity only in the site of the uh, primary pancreatic mass and the known peritoneal lesion does not exhibit any significant hypermetabolism. And now the CE99, as you can see, the trend is now normalized. Done and showed a stable partial response in the primary pancreatic mass. And the case was referred to Dr. Saif, who's thankfully treated him with a stereotactic body radiotherapy that was completed on 1st of July, 2021 and the patient will be seen in four weeks for uh, follow-up. So what are the options for second line for patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer? Actually, all these studies was done at the era where the gemcitabine was the standard of care. We have the CONCO-003 uh, study and the pancreox. Both of them, they look to the oxaloblatin and uh, five few with contradicting result. In the Con CONCO study, it showed that Folfox uh, after gemcitabine improved the median overall survival and the progression for survival slightly improved. However, this was not seen in the Bancariox study. However, it's an option for patients who progressed in gemcitabine and they are still fit for therapy. Another uh, approved FDA medication for the second line therapy is the non-niposomal ironotican. It's uh, the, uh, a formulation that allow to have the ironotican for longer half-life with increased AUC, slower uh, clearance, and a more exposure of the tumor to, to the drug. This was uh, studied in the Napoli uh, one study that looked to the, uh, the uh, non-liposomal ironotican in addition to 5-U and leucoporin versus 5-U leucoporin uh, alone. And the study met the primary endpoint in, the, in term of improvement of the median uh, overall um, uh, survival. So it's uh, one of the standard of care for patients who progressed on the first line setting gemcitabine based uh, chemotherapy, you might consider to five few. So again, the toxicity was more in patient who receive the non-liposomal ironotican in combination with the five few. And despite of that, there are still multiple unanswered questions uh, regarding this regimen. Since a good number of patients now, they are receiving the fulfirinox in the first line setting. So what is the uh, the activity of non-liposomal ironotican on those patients who already treated with the uh, conventional uh, ironotican and how the non-liposomal ironotican will do in the first line setting. So these questions are still not answered. However, in one abstract that was presented in last uh, ASCO, it showed a small number of patients, but it showed that if there is any immediate benefit for liposomal ironotican after patient received fulfirinox, it's uh, modest at best. So there are other um, multiple small prospective studies that looked to the use of nap baclitaxel after the fulfirinox. All showed relatively uh, a small percentage of the response rate ranging from 10 to 17 uh, to 18% and small number of patients. However, still an option for patients who progressed on fulfirinox with no significant neuropathy, uh, gemcitabine and abraxane can be used after the fulfirinox regimen. So what I have discussed so far is applied to most of the patients with pancreatic cancer because most of them, they don't have a driver mutation. And the most common mutation is the Keras mutation. However, we are talking now about 8 to 10% of those cases who have Keras wild type might have a driver mutation and they have a therapeutic target for the, this mutation. Uh, this mutation include the NRG1, uh, which was uh, recently gained an attention especially in lung cancer patient and pancreatic cancer patient, the PRF mutation, Intrac, and uh, ALK, and ROS uh, as well. So one of the initial workup that we do for our patients
mentioned is that to offer the germline testing for uh, all pancreatic cancer patient. And uh, we learned that uh, sticking to the testing criteria or guidelines to test patients with pancreatic cancer for uh, germline mutation will miss about 50% of the patients. So it's recommended to have a universal testing for all comers with pancreatic cancer patients. And this has an implication. So having somatic or germline mutation in the uh, BRCA mutation or in the other uh, homologous recombination uh, pathway uh, genes, it has an impact in the choice of therapy. So if you have if you have this information ahead of time that the patient has BRCA mutation or PALP2 mutation, you might consider cisplatin and gemcitabine as a first line therapy because we know those patients respond very well to this combination instead of exposing the patient to the aggressive regimen like forferonox. I will skip this. So there are uh, two years about the brightness in patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer. And um, we know closely which was the phase three study looked to the in patients with no airline mutation in BRCA1 to treat it uh, as a first line with platin uh, and the disease progression within the 16 week they were randomized to receive olaparib 300 milligram uh, twice a day versus placebo and this is one of the um, downside of the study that we don't usually keep the patient without treatment uh, if they respond to therapy and this is was one of the thing about this uh, trial However, the study meets uh, the uh, primary endpoint, which is the progression-free survival. However, there was no significant overall survival advantage for this medication. So it's a patient with uh, metastatic pancreatic cancer who had a stable or response to the first line platinum-based chemotherapy to receive olaparib as a maintenance therapy. Sure. So back to our patient. So his... Um, uh, genetic testing showed that the patient has pathogenic variant in the PMS1 uh, gene. So PMS1 gene is it's a, a pro gene that encodes protein belonging to the DNA mismatch repair. And it's thought to be involved in the repair of DNA mismatch. And it can um, form a heterodimer with MLH1, which is a known DNA mismatch repair protein. The presence of this mutation is very rare. It's about 36% of all 0.36% of patients with uh, pancreatic cancer. So as this finding is relative to our patient, yes, because uh, this might uh, affect the decision about the second line therapy, which is immunotherapy. Is this true germline? Yes, it's true germline because we tested his uh, sons and daughters and uh, some of them, they carry the same mutation. And uh, as I mentioned, we can use this information to decide about the subsequent uh, therapy. So what about the use of immunotherapy in metastatic pancreatic cancer? For the sake of the time, uh, there was no significant success apart from the patients who are deficient for mismatch repair, which represent only 1% of all patients with pancreatic cancer. In the keynote 158, it's included 22%, 22 patients with pancreatic cancer patient, and uh, they show uh, overall response rate of 18.2%. Uh, um, uh, and median uh, disease uh, of median duration of uh, response was 13.4 months. So it's an option for patient with mismatch repair uh, deficiency to have it as a second line therapy. There are ongoing multiple uh, studies that looked to the, uh, the immunotherapy in combination with uh, other uh, agents. Most of them are phase two uh, studies. So TRAC, as you know, has agnostic is agnostic biomarker. And if you have patient with with pancreatic cancer with uh, uh, intrac uh, uh, mutation, you, you can use you, you consider use larotriptanib or intractinib as a treatment, but this has to be done in the second line setting. So uh, one minute about the NRG, uh, one gene, it, it has, as I mentioned, gained the attention the last few years. Its presence in, uh, in pancreatic cancer is not really established, but it's, it's about less than 5%. And, uh, it's thought to be uh, a biomarker that indicates the response to afetinib. And uh, in the recent ask was a talk about the RG1 in patients with pancreatic cancer. And I think it's a matter of time before the testing for in RG1 is should become a part of the standard for patients with pancreatic cancer because we have a target for that. 
So how we sequence therapy for patients in advanced pancreatic cancer. So as I mentioned, first line therapy, it depends on the age and the performance status. You have the two options of gemcitabine, apraxine, or modified fulfirinox. Then the second line therapy depends on the um, uh, residual toxicity. You still have the uh, non-liposomal aeronuticant. Gemcitabine and apraxine can be used as a second line for patients who receive fulfirinox. And uh, always consider testing for or molecular profile for patients with pancreatic cancer. And if you have any actionable mutation, you might consider uh, treating those patients uh, accordingly. So this is the last slide. Uh, there are um, a lot of challenges in, manage in, ma in managing patients with pancreatic cancer because it's not easy to target simple mutation. It, it's an interaction between the immunotherapy, molecular targeted therapy, and stromal uh, depleting uh, agent, and the ongoing clinical trials to look a combination that work in most of these uh, areas at one uh, time. And by this, I conclude my talk, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, you did a great job uh, in this uh, deadly disease. Uh,